Welcome to the Power Your Classroom with Need Energy Careers Curriculum Workshop. My name is Barry Scott. I'm the State Director for the National Energy Education Development Project and work with schools throughout the state. I'm joined today by Karen Terrell, my associate. Karen is a certified energy manager and curriculum developer coming to us from Indiana today. I'm going to let Karen start off by describing a couple of the programs that are uh, career related that the NEED project manages and supports. And then we'll come back to talk about uh, energy academies that we support in California. Take it away, Karen. Thank you, Barry. As he said, my name is Karen Terrell. I've been working for NEED full time since 2011. Before that, I was a high school chemistry and physical science teacher. I use NEED materials in my classroom quite a bit. What we're going to do is we're going to go through what NEED is, who we are as an as a organization, in case you haven't heard of us, and then highlight three career-focused programs that we have within our organization to give you some ideas about how energy can fit into your career-oriented program. NEED stands for the National Energy Education Development Project. We were founded in 1980, just after the first energy crisis, if you're old enough to remember that. Um, we have grown into a worldwide program in all 50 states, some pro Canadian provinces and some countries internationally, um, covering all aspects of energy use. So our mission statement is, is in, written in bullet point format there for you. Our goal is to create people or to encourage people, not create people, but encourage people to think critically about energy, to understand that every energy source has pros and cons, to be able to make good decisions about energy. Because let's think about it. Um, if we're talking about 15 year old kids, it's going to be 15 years before they're really making a lot of those decisions, buying a home, buying cars, maybe, maybe you know, 10 years before they're doing that. But in the next 10 to 15 years is when those 15 year old kids are gonna be coming into society. The energy picture in 10 or 15 years is gonna be different from what it is today. So if we just teach them about today, it's not gonna be very helpful for them. We've delivered uh, pre-COVID more than hundred workshops in 500 different cities. Post COVID, we've been able to still keep our fairly rigorous workshop delivery schedule through virtual format. And I think we're reaching people in areas we weren't able to actually get to before just because they're not limited geographically. So that's been exciting for us as an organization. We take a look at energy and in developing a good energy unit, we have eight steps. The first is science of energy and science of energy is foundational for us. So we look at potential as well as kinetic energy. Um, and then we break that down into other forms and we teach kids how we transform from one form to another as we use energy. So for example, if we're talking about running a vehicle or taking a petroleum product, gasoline or, or diesel or jet fuel, burning it to extract the energy from that chemical energy and then using that to propel that vehicle forward. We also have several different curriculum pieces that cover energy sources. So there's um, solar and wind and hydropower and nuclear and coal and oil and gas. Um, and then we have we have units that cover electricity and transportation. And those first four steps on the left there, those are showing you how uh, we use energy as a society. So that's basically giving us a framework, an understanding of the big energy picture. The next four steps are either reinforcing that information or teaching kids about thinking forward about how they use energy, especially that efficiency and conservation part. We're looking at how do we use energy in our homes and our schools and how can we use less energy in our homes and our schools. Synthesis and reinforcement, we're bringing in some language arts kinds of skills, and we are bringing in some creative arts kinds of skills, some math, other things to reinforce the concepts through those first four steps. Evaluation is self-explanatory, and our leadership and outreach program amongst kids is probably one of our more important parts, and Barry is going to highlight that for you at the end of the presentation. So we're looking at career prep, and we're looking at the way need can be involved in a career prep program. We have three programs that are already in place, just kind of give you an idea of, of what we can do and what we, we have done. Um, the first is working with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in uh, Golden, Colorado. And then the second is with the Sacramento Municipal Utility District in Sacramento. And then Barry's gonna tell you about the PG&E program that we have. 
Our first partner, the NREL Workforce Development Program, is focusing on hydropower. So in conjunction with the National Hydropower Association and the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, we have put together workforce development, which is high school and young adult um, curriculum programs designed to pull people in or equip them for entry level positions in the hydropower industry. Um, the first thing that we did is we took our conventional hydropower program that we already had existing. We took that high school unit and we just updated it. We added some future technology such as low impact and pump storage. Um, we pulled in some additional activities that focus more on that career development and um, that update should be uploaded to our our website if it hasn't been already it should be there very soon the second one was a brand new um, career unit that we pulled together called your future in hydropower designed for career and techno tech ed classrooms um, and then in process over the next 12 to 18 months we have a hydropower guide for adult learners and then we will be working on high school curricula for marine kinetic energy. So just to talk a little bit about the CTE curriculum that we have, which is probably something that most people at this conference will be most in, in, interested in, um, it was written by CTE teachers to be used in CTE classrooms. It doesn't mean it can't be used in a conventional classroom, but it has that focus, that CTE focus. All of our curriculum units were written by actual educators and piloted by actual educators and revised in um, consultation with actual educators. So it's not a bunch of curriculum specialists in a room somewhere writing for teachers and telling you what you're supposed to be doing. It's teachers who know what they need to do, who know what they need, who are writing our curriculum pieces. And that applies across the board to everything we have. So all of our um, lessons in the CTE book have some informational text for reading and then some hands on activities and covers these um, topics that are listed. We hit electricity pretty hard. Um, including induction and talking about induction. And then you're looking at hand tools and using hand tools and reading a ruler, some basic science concepts of material science. And when I talk basic, I mean low level, just a couple of properties, just to kind of get kids feet wet in that idea of selecting materials for different um, applications. Properties of concrete, using concrete as an illustration and um, an application of some different concepts like compression and tension and um, all those other things, you know, um, and I can't think of off the top of my head the other things, but um, just concrete as an application. And then some fluid dynamics information about laminar flow and turbulent flow, not real heavy on that, not doing any calculations, just looking at, you know, what happens when flow is turbulent rather than laminar. And finally, wrapping it up with some water quality testing and some job seeking skills with career descriptions. The Sacramento Municipal Utility District program is called Solar Career Pathways. Um, it was a partnership with SMUD and Spotlight Solar and Baker Energy to develop a program that highlights some basic science concepts like circuits and solar energy and using hand tools and how to read a ruler some soft career skills for on the job. So things like maintaining professionalism and being a good employee and staying safe on the job, those kinds of things. And then um, some really good technical hands-on skills focusing on that solar installation industry. The idea here is to train people with some basic skills so they would be better equipped and more competitive to obtain jobs in the solar installation industry. Um, we went through the first iteration of the course, which was a lot of fun. We did that back in January and February of 2020, and then COVID hit. So as soon as the pandemic restrictions are lifted, we will be doing the second iteration of that course in Sacramento. These are some highlights of some, some of the concepts that are covered in that course. So it is broken out into 10 four-hour class sessions for a total of 40 hours of training. Um, we look at energy sources, electricity generation, Again, that hand tool and reading a ruler part, some basic math skill review, especially focusing on fractions. Um, just some basic solar science, you know, what's going on in the sun? How does a solar cell work? What's going on inside of that solar cell? Um, some electricity and circuits, and then looking specifically at solar PV systems, their components and siting and sizing a system. Not that they're gonna be able to do that independently after they complete the course, but it gives them some idea of all the things that go into um, installing a solar system. 
Every lesson had some reading, had some reflecting, and had some hands-on of some kind. So these are some photos that were taken from the first iteration of the Solar Career Pathways course. Um, the top two are on an afternoon in the courtyard of the Greater, Suburb Greater Sacramento Urban League building. I keep wanting to say suburban, it's Sacramento Urban League um, building. They have a nice courtyard there and we set up outside with some actual full-size solar panels and some actual full-size components, racking systems and the like. And the students had an opportunity to work with power tools and these racking systems to install, hook up, and energize an actual solar panel. Brad Johnson was the instructor there. He's with Baker Energy. He showed everybody how to use an impact driver and how to use a power drill, how to use a multimeter, snap a chalk line, some really important skills that um, installers need to have in order to be successful in this field. And if you look at the group, um, especially at that bottom picture, the bottom picture is the second day of class and everybody's engaged in an activity called baseload balance, which um, is a kinesthetic activity that, balance, that shows the balance between electricity demand and electricity generation with the regional transmission organizations having to balance that over a 24 hour period. And so the ropes that everybody's holding is representing the grid and everybody getting on, you know, the demand coming on the grid or the generation coming on the grid or going offline. If you look at the group of people um, in this course, you'll see that they're a very diverse group, male, female, old and young, lots of different um, ethnicities represented. We had some people who were recent immigrants to the United States. Um, it was my absolute pleasure to work with them. I had such a great time with all of them. Um, and I'm glad to report that I just got an email a few days ago from one woman who was in the, in the program. She said she actually now has a job with Baker Energy, and that was exciting for me to be able to report. So that's a little bit about those two career, those two career focused programs that we have with NEED. And now Barry is going to tell you about the uh, PG and E Career Academies. Take it away, Barry. Okay. Hey, thanks, Karen, for sharing information about the NREL Hydropower Program and the SMUD Solar Career Pathway Program. Those are both exciting programs that the NEED project supports and, and facilitates. Now we're going to talk about something closer to home, a California Partnership Academy program that began in uh, 2010. And the partner is Pacific Gas and Electric Company. Ten years ago, they created energy academies at five high schools, California Partnership Academies, and the first of their kind sponsored by an electric utility company. It's been a really exciting 10 years, but what's important to know is that need kits and curriculum create the foundation for the energy content that they're learning. Tons of activities around renewables, non-renewables, energy conservation, and careers in energy um, are used throughout the three-year program at each of these schools. The company provides field trips, expert lectures, uh, mentoring, and summer internships. For five summers, we had paid internships at our high schools for up to 100 students every summer. We've put that on hold due to COVID, but we've begun to, to do other things. Now, you might wonder, what are the ways that energy can fit into the different subject areas? Well. You know, the history of things like the Industrial Revolution and any other important era in, in human history had a lot to do with energy. Think about the, uh, the discovery of fire. That's a form of energy right there. Um, and social studies, too. You know, the, without energy, uh, very little would change from time to time. Uh, social studies, you know, wars have been fought and won and lost over energy matters. Um, Economies are strong or weak, depending upon energy matters. Our food, our water, and our transportation are all energy dependent. Math and science connections are, are self-evident. Environmental sciences, climate change, all about energy, right? But more than ever, careers are opening up that are energy related. If they're not directly in the energy and utility sector, then they're in uh, associated uh, areas. So let's see, where does energy education and the NEED project fit into different industry sectors? Well, agriculture and natural resources. You know, energy is a natural resource and 
agriculture uses a lot of energy. So folks in, in that industry sector are deeply involved in energy. Buildings and construction have to be made energy efficient. So the NEED project has materials around energy efficient design and buildings. And uh, your students, if you're in that industry sector, need to learn about energy. Uh, the energy and utility sector, uh, of course. Engineering and design. Similarly, energy efficient products and energy efficient uh, systems is all about engineering and design. You know, finance and business, no business can succeed if they're wasteful of energy. And many businesses are directly involved in energy. Information technology, IT and technology are used to save energy, to find energy, and all of our, all of our products are becoming smart products, like a smart home that uses energy efficiently. And manufacturing and product development, there's a whole world of opportunity to invent more energy efficient uh, products and to use energy more efficiently in manufacturing goods. And finally, transportation. You know, in California, about half of our energy goes to transportation and about half of our greenhouse gas emissions are coming from the transportation sector. So that's a, energy is a really important thing in, in, that, in that industry sector. So let me tell you about how PG&E has worked with energy academies uh, especially during this COVID uh, shutdown that we've had now for about a year. First of all, it's really exciting that at the same time that schools and classrooms had to shut down, they weren't able to participate much or connect very well with their industry partners. Uh, and at the same time, PG&E has a culture of volunteering. Almost every employee spends some time uh, every month volunteering for some favorite cause but under COVID restrictions, they're not able to get out and, and meet with people. So we have begun to connect people uh, with opportunities to connect with schools. And so it's a, it's a way of taking uh, two, two groups that wish they could get together and using tools and technology to put them together. So some of the ways we're doing that are with career presentations. We're recording and archiving short uh, presentations by employees talking about how, how they got to where they are and what they do and what they studied and what their challenges were. We have uh, employees who are conducting participatory workshops online with students and we can set something up with your classroom. We're beginning to develop workplace, virtual workplace tours our employees are willing to do project mentoring and project coaching and, and judging. And we're starting to do soft skills support. For example, resume reviews, mock interviews, and a little bit of uh, coaching throughout their career. So what you'll wanna do is make sure that uh, you, you sign up to, to work with us. But before I tell you about that, I'm gonna show you a few pictures from uh, our uh, energy academies. Upper left, there's a couple of students at Edison High School in Fresno who were involved in our summer internship program, four week paid internship where they learn safety and they learn soft skills and they go out in the field. Lower left, well, that's all of our teachers from the academies one summer when we took them to Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant for a field trip for our, you know, our summer retreat for academies. In the upper right, you see, uh, a screenshot from a, one of our participatory workshops. The teacher at the uh, Merlot Institute of Environmental Technology in Stockton, Carly Carlos is there, the upper left, I'm on the upper right. On the lower left is Amy Couch, our, our uh, very talented uh, employee volunteer who was the leader of this virtual workshop, Amy Couch, uh, prepared a presentation, a slideshow, and we gave uh, students short projects to work in breakout rooms, and then they'd come back and report uh, on, their, on their findings. And Nathan uh, Haley from Stockton Unified was participating too. So the four of us managed this participatory workshop. So what you'll wanna do is jot down this web address or go to our kiosk, and go to the Survey Monkey to complete uh, a questionnaire so that we can send you information. We'll sign you up for the NEED project, newsletters and updates, and uh, you can express your interest in having 
us contact you to set up employee virtual volunteer forms of support. That might include career videos, virtual presentations, be a project coach, advisory committee, uh, year round mentor, provide mock interviews and re resume reviews. But it all starts with getting a hold of us and uh, letting us know what you're looking for. That's for teachers in the PGE service area, regardless of industry sector. We also want to make sure that you visit our website. Our website is fantastic. You just need to go take a half an hour and set it aside and go to need.org and be sure to, to sh look around because you're going to find uh, free workshops on our calendar. You can attend these. Some of them are on Saturdays. There's no cost to attend and you get free kits and materials and the training to use our kits. You'll want to go to shop.need.org to download any of more than 100 different titles. And these come to you as PDF files that you can print as many copies as you need at no cost. And what's interesting is the way you, you register to get the downloads is such that when we update a particular title that you've uh, acquired in the past, we'll send you a, a notification that your materials are, are updated and we have a fresh version of that, of that uh, title, that activity guide or or whatever guide it might be that you uh, got in the past. And so there's plenty more you wanna learn about our, uh, our kits, check out our hands-on kits, check out our curriculum. And we have a great set of graphics that are free to use and just spend some time on the NEED website. And finally, we've uh, put in our kiosk three flyers that talk about uh, different valuable uh, offerings that the NEED project has. So the first one here on the left, and again, these are in our kiosk, you can print out the, uh, the one page flyers. What we've done first is we put our energy career related curriculum kind of all together. And this flyer will tell you how to find them on our website. We also wanna tell you about the fabulous youth awards. Every summer, uh, well, every year, we identify schools that have excelled in energy education projects at every grade level. And teachers submit a portfolio of their students' work. And we then select the middle school of the year for California, high school of the year, uh, and for the different states. And you might win for rookie school uh, for the year. And in a normal year, uh, we bring together a few hundred of these uh, winners students and teachers to the Washington DC area for uh, several days of sharing their information and tours of uh, Washington DC and, and then the award ceremony itself. So you'll wanna look into that. And, and finally, the National Energy Conference for Educators. And this is where I learned about the NEED project when I was a teacher in, uh, in classrooms working with Alt-Ed kids, alternative education kids, you know, in 2003, I came back with uh, my materials and the kids fell in love with energy education. The, the fact that it was hands-on was exciting, but it was also really important that they were learning that, that they could really have an impact on the future, on the environment, and they really cared to learn more and more about energy. So I found it to be just uh, fabulous materials. And, the NEED project has done nothing but improve these materials over time. And as I mentioned, about 10 years ago, we, we began getting deeper and deeper into careers. So you'll wanna make sure to contact us, contact me, go to the NEED website, sign up for uh, help at that uh, SurveyMonkey link and uh, otherwise just stay in touch. So I am uh, gonna share my contact information and, and Karen's contact information. Remember, I'm your state program director. So even if you're not in PGE service area, anywhere in California, I am your go-to person to help you find curriculum, help you uh, plan strategies for your classroom. Uh, anything you want, I will try to help you with. So there's my email and there's a phone number that you can use for phone call, voice call, or to text message me. Then there's Karen's uh, contact information too. And remember, Karen's a, a specialist uh, certified energy manager. So she's super sharp when it comes to building science and energy efficiency, but she was also a chemistry teacher in high school. So 
look her up if you have questions. And both of us hope that we hear from you and we hope you enjoyed our workshop and uh, good luck with, the, with the, your school year. Thank you. Bye.